Uh, here's a quick case, 82 year old man with CLI, large lateral dorsum foot ulcer, and despite podiatry care for really quite some time, his ulcer and wound kept getting worse and worse. He has the classic risk factor, hypertension, diabetes, et cetera. He's appropriately treated with medications in terms of being on aspirin, on um, uh, a statin, his insulin and blood pressure, everything are controlled. His labs are normal, and he presents to your office like this. You can see classic chronic ischemia. He's got thickened nails, shiny hairless skin, discoloration, a large wound that's basically going down to the tendons. And this is what he looked like on exam. So basically he had normal common femoral artery pulses, so we, and there was symmetric bilaterally. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we know that he has no aortoiliac or inflow disease, and we're really dealing with infrainguinal disease. His popliteal artery pulse was Doppler, uh, and his pedal pulses were barely audible. So at this point, I kind of had an idea of what I was going to do. Uh, we also, on top of the good vascular physical exam, we do a good, uh, we, we get a good study in terms of PVR, ABI, uh, TBIs if needed. Remember, when you have diabetics, TBI is more accurate than ABIs. And so as a result, uh, any diabetic or CKD patient, I typically get TBIs as well. In this case, you can see this is beyond the scope of this talk, but in this case, he had really bad waveforms in that, in that right leg. And uh, we knew that we had a lot of work to do. I typically do an ultrasound when they're on the table before they prep, so I can check the status of the common femoral artery, the proximal SFA, and the deep femoral. And he had triphasic waveforms, and I felt like I had enough room where I could go anagrade. In this case, I punctured the proximal SFA. I typically try to go for the common femoral, but sometimes you can't because of panis or it's too high up and you can't see it. And so I typically will puncture the proximal SFA. And the way I decide on doing that is I'll look with ultrasound. If I can compress it with ultrasound and it looks like a healthy, normal arterial wall, at least along the anterior aspect, then I know that I can use a closure device when I'm done or at least hold compression and get a good uh, and achieve hemostasis. So I did anagrade stick, six French sheath. I did my angiogram. Uh, the proximal mid distal SFA were relatively normal. I put my sheath as far down as I could. And then you can see that I basically had an occluded AT, TP trunk, and no posterior tibial. Maybe a little bit of a perineal here. Basically nothing in the foot. Perhaps a lot of this stuff is hibernating. So basically I said to myself, at this point, I know I'm going to need most likely dual access. But what is going to give me that idea? Or how am I going to know that? Is there any information out there that will help me decide on what my approach should be? And so I was thinking, let's recanalize the anterior tibial. Let's go after the pedal loop if I have to, TP trunk to perineal, and maybe that'll be enough. And so what was my approach going to be? <clears throat> well, there's the so-called C-top classification, which is really coined by Dr. Mustafa and Dr. Saab, who are really CLI experts. They're interventional cardiologists in Michigan. And basically what they want you to do is evaluate the, ca the caps. They looked at thousands of chronic total occlusions and realized that these were really the four main types of CTO caps that you'll see. There's the cap, which is uh, right here. You can see it kind of goes downward. And then there's a cap, which is more like this. So if I'm coming from above here and my guide wire engages this cap, I'm most likely going to be intraluminal at least part of the way. Where I end up down here just depends on your te technique and how tough the uh, CTO is to get through. If I have a cap like this, my catheter and guide wire naturally are going to want to slide off. And as they slide off, then I'm going to be subintimal or subadventitial right away. And where I end up here again, I'm going to probably need something to try to get me back into the lumen, whether it's uh, access from below or a reentry device from above or the various techniques we talked about. So the C-top classification is something that's very important, gives you an idea of how to approach things. I like to approach things in an antegrade fashion the majority of the time, unless I'm dealing with flush occlusions and that's a different situation. So here in this case, I tried from above and then put my catheter on there. I knew I was gonna need dual access. So I got pedal access here, anterior tibial. I followed my wire under ultrasound for a part of the way. And I got to here and I thought, wow, this is great. I'm basically done, I already recanalized this. But then realized that, nope, not the case at all. You can see that when I did the angiogram, I'm kind of at the side of the wall. So I'm clearly subadventitial and not, and this would not be a great, I mean, I guess I could access it here, but it's not the optimal strategy in this case. And you can see trying from above and below, 
I am in two different sub in, uh, sub admin tissue planes. Obviously, I'm using a low tip load guide wire. As you can see, it's prolapsing here. And so I need to do something here. And there's two different techniques you can use to get through or allow these two channels to communicate. The technique one is I can use either cart or I can do a reverse cart, balloon from below, balloon from above. So in this case, I basically did a balloon <clears throat> from above. And then as once I disrupted that tissue in between the two guide wires, I was able to eventually get my guide wire into the lumen or the true lumen or the intraluminal, uh, uh, the native lumen of the normal artery above, and then eventually out a catheter and sheath, obtained wire through and through access. Then I reversed my access by pulling the wire back, putting a catheter from above, injecting, this is the pedal access site, so that's normal to see that. You can just put your finger on it to achieve hemostasis if you want to. Or in this case, I got down with a wire, ultimately did balloon angioplasty. The second technique you can do when you're in this situation, when you have a chronic total occlusion and you're in two subintimal spaces, is what we call navi bossing. So this was really a four French navi cross catheter. This happens to be made by Terumo, has a little curve, it's 035. <clears throat> and I'm basically using it to disrupt the tissue between the two guide wires, which are in two separate planes. And by disrupting that tissue, I'm ultimately able to get my, gad, my wire into that catheter. Now, this is not something I do in a normal artery that's healthy. This is only within the occluded segment of the artery because that's already a, a, an abnormal vessel and you're not gonna cause any more trauma that's gonna make it any worse. Obviously, you wanna be careful in terms of perforation. And so you wanna watch what you're doing carefully. Then once I had my through and through access, in this case, I happen to have a pedal sheath. You can see I left it open and then I did atherectomy orbital in this case. And then this, in this case, I basically got flow and allow some of the debris to flow out. Then we did angioplasty, did some additional interventions and ultimately was able to achieve really a two vessel runoff. And with some reconstitution of the posterior tibial artery here that you can see, and you can see on the final, here's the reconstituted posterior tibial. Here's the ATDP pedal plantar loop and a nice angiographic wound blush. And was able to really improve this patient's ABI to 0.7, had good robust waveforms post-intervention. You can see duplex ultrasound pre on the top, post on the bottom, nice waveforms in the anterior tibial artery. And then ultimately by eight months, we got him down to here. So hopefully in another few months, we'll get him to complete healing. And uh, we have really saved this patient from a major amputation, which would have been either below knee or above knee. So thank you. And if you ever need to contact me, you can either email me or find me on Twitter. And uh, hopefully that was useful for you.